Hi, this is Titu Tatsu, aka Lawkeeper101, and today you'll be watching a video done against the one who calls himself Lift Aloft, aka Rob Reed ESQ. Um, throughout this whole video, you will see step by step what Lift Aloft has done from his influences um, to his interests to his actions throughout one year and a half. Um, all he has done against the min this ministry of Mighty Wind and against the true body of Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I pray throughout this whole video, and viewers will see the depravity and the wickedness and the evil of this man's heart. And um, unsubscribe for him, for those who are subscribed to him, will unsubscribe for him, from him. And um, come to this ministry of Mighty Wind to discover the truth um, about the satanic infiltrators here in this in this Christian community, especially here on YouTube. Uh, also in this video, nearing the end of the video, you will discover a truth. Liptilov's peculiar occultic activity and also his confession to his peculiar occultic activity. Um, and we know that Yahweh is the one who confounded Liptilov to reveal this in no uncertain terms. Liptilov, I want you to sit back and watch as Yahweh exposes you, all your actions and your whole life story, all in one video, for His glory alone, for Yushua's glory and Rekhodesh's glory. And again to all viewers, throughout this video you will see how Lift Aloft has created this Christianity of the Falmen as many satanic infiltrators today, uh, mixing light and dark and the twisting of the truth and the perverting of the true gospel, creating a false Jesus and a false gospel. Uh, he claims to be a worship leader, but he's not. And again, all to Yahweh's glory, all to the Yushua's glory, and the Rekha Kadesh's glory. In Yushua HaMashiach's name. Amen. For those who don't know, this man first introduced himself in June 2008 as a friend and congregational member of the known cult called the Unity Gathering, led by Pastor George C. I know that the proscription for you now is to be stoned to death. So consider this a spiritual stoning. Your ministry is dead. It didn't take long before Lift the Love's true intentions arose in coming to YouTube, as he soon began his attacks against the holy ministry called a mighty wind. Many of Lift Aloft's slanderous lies against the Mighty Wind, such as being a cult or a Mighty Wind or thieves, are fueled by his repetitious claims that a Mighty Wind does not follow Jesus Christ. Not only are his slander statements false, but in a brief moment of stupidity and dimwittedness, Lift Aloft revealed in no uncertain terms who it is that he calls Jesus Christ. As we know, the scripture clearly condemns anyone who preaches another's Messiah. Upon this premise, you will understand in more detail the satanic New Age activities and interests of Liptalot, and the actions done against the Mighty Wind, including his recent arrogant activity of theft. Here in this comment section, sometime during the month of June, while defending someone who made a video in support of a Mighty Wind ministry, a battle waged on his video page, Holy a Mighty Wind against the Unity Gathering cult. Here, many dark secrets were revealed and confirmed again and again concerning the Unity Gathering and their beliefs and activities, such as suicides go to heaven, as told by the Kathleen Bean, who also said Jesus Christ confirmed that to her to be true. Among those filthy comments was one made by Liptilov to me in my T2 Tattoo account, accusing a mighty wind of sending David curses to the Unity Gathering. Now, of course, I did not have any indication or clue as to the meaning of what he said, being that the scripture clearly says in Deuteronomy 28 that Yahweh is the only one who blesses and curses. So I questioned him further to discover if such David curses can be found in the scriptures, the holy word of God. Liptilov then replies and tells me that the psalmist, the man after Yah's own heart, called King David, who prayed a righteous prayer from the depths of his heart to Yah out of anguish, was actually involved in an evil activity of sending curses as communicated by Liptilov. Liptilov was of course speaking of Psalms 35. Now a very important statement was made by this tyrant, which reveals the one he calls God. 
He said in answering my question, roll on the floor. Psalms 35, my friend. This is a prayer I would never put on any enemy because I know that it is completely contrary to the commandment of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now for those who struggle to understand, if you consider that Psalms 35 is the Word of God, and John 1 clearly states that the Word was with God and was God in the beginning and became flesh, He who is called Yahushua HaMashiach, Hebrew for Jesus Christ, then let this truth clear the blur from your mind. It also says that Yahweh and Yahushua are one. According to Lichtelob, Psalms 35 is completely contrary to Revelation 6.16, which states, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman and free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the rocks of the mountains, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Of course, such allegations about the word of God will be severely false. So in summary, so you all may understand, what Lichtelov has clearly stated here is that in no uncertain terms, the Word of God is completely contrary to the one he calls Jesus Christ. This fact being true, what I will show you next may open your mind as to the reality of the New Age agenda being implemented here on YouTube, especially by this strange man called Lichtelov, as you see him knowingly drink both of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Though this is a forbidden practice in the Word, it is well active in the Unity Gathering cult, as this is in fact the very purpose they came to YouTube, to unite as one the unholy and the holy in defilement, as communicated by their logo, as well as explained by a said ex-member of the Unity Gathering cult. Now, despite the repulsively hypocritical illusion of praise protruding from Lichtelof's mouth, as you will see in many of the videos he has put up on YouTube, you will also see clearly how the New Age agenda of defilement is carried out, as he mixes that which is to bring Yahushua glory with that which brings the devil glory, and then serves as on a platter to the YouTube community this Christianity of defilement. Now the so-called royalty-free music that Lichtelov offers viewers on YouTube carries the cover of innocence. However, when you take a small trip to his website in which he offers this music, it will become strangely apparent to you that the majority of his songs are part of a dedicated service to the devil. Songs such as Closet Creep, Wacky Warehouse, Mudslide, Oral Adrenaline, Broken Mirror, Waves of Regress, Midnight Ride, Ghosts in Machine, Bust Your Jaw, and Happy Scream. All which, as displayed on his website, carry the spirits of anger, aggression, darkness, eccentricity, 
eeriness, conflict, and weirdness. For your safety, I advise you do not listen to any of his music. For the majority of viewers, Liptilov's Christian interests may have already struck you as odd, but to draw such an early conclusion would not do him any justice if we do not pay attention to that which has influenced him to such a depraved and wicked spiritual state. In visiting his channel, I discovered that Liptilov already provided such information. According to him, his influences are the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, whomever those are to Liptilov. But he doesn't stop there. Other influences include the Beatles, the Pesci Mode, and the Cure. Now, it would not serve viewers any interest if they do not have knowledge of who these particular three influences are. So please brace yourself. Who were the Beatles? The Beatles were a rock band from England who gained much fame and popularity during the 1960s. A four-man team comprised of singers Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, and John Lennon. Even to this day, the Beatles still hold the title of the best-selling band in all of history, as they seem to have touched the hearts of many. However, much like many singers today, such fame doesn't come without a price. This group was soon dismantled when John Lennon was murdered outside his home in 1980 and George Harrison dying of cancer in the year 2001. Despite the popularity and the image they portrayed, this band held many dark secrets which were purposefully communicated through their music. Many of their songs promoted rebellion, fornication, Catholicism, Eastern mysticism, Satanism, among other influences, and were very sexually degenerate. For example, their song in 1968, Why Don't We Do It in the Road. Other blasphemous words spoken by these men include, first by Paul McCartney, we probably seem to be anti-religious, none of us believe in God. Also John Lennon, one of the lead singers who said, Christianity will go, it will vanish and shrink. I need not argue about that, I'm right, and will be proved right. We're more popular than Jesus now. He also said in his book called A Spaniard in the Works, Jesus El Pifico, a garlic-eating, stinking little yellow, greasy fascist bastard, Catholic Spaniard. Encoding words from one of his interviews done in 1980, John Lennon said, What is this game of doing things because other people want it? The whole Beatle idea was to do what you want, right? For those who do not know, this phrase was quoted from the Book of Satan, which says, do what you want, this is the whole of the law. This same satanic cult you will find on the channel of Satanist Peter Thin, who has teamed up with Liftaloft and his coven, the Unity Gathering, seeking the destruction of a mighty wind. And we will not forget the Beatles' fascination with the man named Alistair Crowley, who appeared on the cover of their album, Sgt. Peppers, that was released 20 years after the pitiful death of Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley was an occultist, astrologer, mystic, and the author of many satanic books. Such were they who influenced Liptalot, even to this day. As mentioned before, Another one of Liptilov's influences is the Pesci Mode, an English electronic music band formed in 1980 during the same year John Lennon died. The Pesci Mode, as the Beatles, are even to this day known around the world as the greatest electronic music band in history and is worshipped by millions worldwide. This band also carries a weight of dark secrets that is not only communicated through their music, but almost in everything they do from their actions to their attire to their lyrics. Many of their songs promote fornication and sadomasochism, which is a sexual pleasure one gets from inflicting pain on others or themselves. However, one particular song which gained much popularity throughout the world called Personal Jesus from their album named Blasphemous Rumors will shed some light on the dark mind of Liptalop and why he's so motivated to destroy the holy ministry of a mighty wind. The lyrics of this song, some of which I will share with you, include Reach out and touch faith, your own personal Jesus. Take second best, 
put me to the test. You know I'm a forgiver. I'll make you a believer. Reach out and touch faith, your own personal Jesus. And whilst this song is being played, the images that are presented to you in video are sex, fornication, pain, lust, and rebellion. And to briefly relate the meaning of this, what is being said here through this song of personal Jesus, and what you're being told is to reject the Jesus Christ of the Bible, and instead seek another who is in your likeness and is conformed to your image, someone whose law is the fulfillment of your will, or in other words, do what you want, this is the whole of the law. Such a personal Jesus is none other than the Antichrist himself. This being Niftalov's influences, you can now understand why Niftalov rejects the scriptures, Psalms 35 and Revelation 6.16 as being totally contrary to the one he calls Jesus Christ. Taking into consideration Liptilov's third influence, the rock band called The Cure, we will soon discuss Liptilov's strange blood addictions, which he fuels through books and movies, and also through a peculiar activity made known by an ex unity gathering member. However, before we travel there, let us shed more light on Liptilov's mission of defilement and also his theft. In total disregard for the words spoken by Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, whom Liptilov claims to serve, to refrain from adding to the scriptures as Yah adds the plagues to his life. We see here Liptilov digging another hole as he battles with a young man who made a video in defense of Yah, saying, Christianity and evolution do not mix. However, Liptilov, begging to differ as his God would have him, tells this young man, that evolution and Christianity do mix, saying God made evolution, totally denying the biblical account of creation that Yah made the earth in six days and rested on the seventh, the biblical Sabbath. This is just another small example of his mission of development, mixing true with false and light with dark. And again speaking of light and dark, Liptilov, in an effortful attempt to show that he is a child of the light, Though failing miserably to refrain from mixing Yah's light with Satan's darkness, created an album called Rob Reed Walk in the Light. On the cover of this album, you again see a dark shadowy figure of a man facing what appears to be a ball of light. Or you could say, standing on the opposite side of this ball of light. Or in other words, not subliminally speaking, in opposition of this ball of light also carrying on his back a guitar which has been turned upside down. To the right of this album cover, you will see that someone has thumped up this album. I can only safely assume that anyone within their right minds did not thumbs it up, but rather a pathetic and defiling man, Liptiloft himself. Now as related earlier, Liptiloft's crimes are not only restricted in Satanism, but he is also guilty of theft. Though he at times attempts to represent the prestige of lawyerhood as he claims to be a lawyer in videos, videos that suffer severely from lack of views, he also falls short as his very pathetic and criminal nature rises up again and again against this ministry a mighty wind to try to destroy it like in this I will show you now. How far Liptoloft has gone in his expeditions of iniquity. On September 11, 2011, Liptilov stole the copyrighted A Mighty Wind Ministry seal belonging to Prophet and Apostle Elizabeth Elijah and defiled it by copying and pasting the image of Apostle Elizabeth Elijah, Associate Minister Yah's Little One, Youth Minister Yah Sheep 777, Associate Youth Minister Yah Servant 777, and another musician and released it on the iTunes market as his copyrighted work, selling it as music for 99 cents. Here you can perfectly see how a so-called respected attorney such as Liptilov goes about conducting that which is apparently his only means of income. On the face of the Almighty Wind seal, you will see the words fart alert, revealing his severe immaturity though not hiding the wickedness of his heart. As a result of this, a mighty wind ministry took prompt action against Liptilov, who
who went by the name of S. Andrews and also against his Liftaloft records. It did not take long before we came in contact with the representative of iTunes who recognized Liftaloft's actions as fraud, slander, and copyright infringement. He responded respecting our demand for the iTunes post to be removed and it was removed five days later. Unfortunately, the song with the stolen seal belonging to a mighty wind was restored after Liftaloft filed a false counter DMCA. Just to shed more light on the remarkable prestige he brings to the profession of lawyerhood as he claims to be a lawyer, this is what he wrote on the cover sheet of his false counter DMCA. This is my counter DMCA. For your information, I am a songwriter and an attorney. Fortunately for me, smiley face in which we shake our heads and then he lies on the letter saying that our claim that the seal belongs to mighty wind was false and tries to prove that by saying a mighty wind has been filing false dmcas against a number of youtube users on youtube of course these youtube users are all part of his cult and all wrongfully stole our videos but we praise yoshua for the victory for the song was again disabled and the seal removed in a fit of desperation to ensure that a mighty wind is slandered from all sides, Liftalov also took the action of again posting the song with the stolen a mighty wind seal on Amazon and selling it again apparently as his only means of income. Though we are not sure how much profit he made from selling it, but we do know that no one enjoyed it. A mighty wind ministry was again forced to seek the removal of the seal from Amazon and Yahweh God again brought swift victory as it was soon removed. What you are seeing throughout this whole ordeal and how effortful Liftalof has been in his expeditions to try to destroy a mighty wind in any way he can is simply a small manifestation of his profession of faith and the character of the Jesus Christ he claims to serve whom we have only briefly proven is the Antichrist himself. The blood that Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross apparently means nothing to lift aloft as he tramples it underfoot and instead deeply fascinates himself with those who claim, not figuratively, to have drank the blood of Christ, which takes us into Liftalov's third influence, the rock band called The Cure. The Cure is a rock band from England finding its beginnings in the year of 1976. The members of this band have been changed time after time, except for songwriter Robert Smith. This band seemed to have sunk deeper and deeper into darkness, which was again communicated through their music, even till the time they brought forth the genre of gothic rock, which has still polluted the minds of many all over the world. The Cure gained many reputations from their music, especially after the release of their album in 1982 called Pornography, which was only one of three albums which when compiled they called it Trilogy. One author of that trilogy was the album Blood Flowers. This band's music, in many obvious ways, carried the aroma of death and sorrow and high-level Satanism, which any professing Christian if having found themselves in a state such that they would allow themselves to be influenced by it and in fact enjoy this music, will have to admit to their own dark and depraved and wicked hearts. One particular song which caught the hearts of many a select few, a song called The Blood, is only a glimpse into the world in which Liptalop exists and thrives on, a world which has been perverted by TV casters to create a fictional illusion of that which is so real. The lyrics of the blood, some of which I will share with you, include The illusion is deep. It's as deep as the night. I can tell by your tears you remember it all. I'm paralyzed by the blood of Christ. Though it clouds my eyes, I can never stop. How it feels to be dry as I cool in the twilight, I recall all the tears. I'm paralyzed by the blood of Christ. Though it clouds my eyes, I can never stop. The satanic nature of these lyrics is revealed fairly plainly. Robert Smith speaks of in this song how he found himself in a strange and eerie place in Portugal 
where he becomes intoxicated on a supposed beverage called the blood of Christ. He also communicates the sensation of extreme thirst for this blood, which he indulges in as soon as the sun no longer gave its light. He also recalls in the song the weeping and pain involved and his eccentric addiction to this blood of Christ. For those who have not yet understood the message being spoken through this song, must still draw a familiar conclusion as most have been spooned by this evil on a daily basis through their favorite TV shows and movies that have clouded your eyes from seeing the true satanic nature of your indulgence and Liptilov's effortful indulgence and fascination. Pastor, prophet, and apostle Elizabeth Elijah has been Liptilov's main target for more than a year, suffering much emotional abuse and distress and financial burdens because of this man, as her only mission is to lead souls to Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. As a result, Pastor Elizabeth Elijah would often, on her channel, express her distaste for him and lift up Psalms 35 prayers of deliverance from his hand. She would also mock him openly on her channel, as his attempts to destroy a mighty wind fail miserably. Many comments she has written against this reprobate, which he has often read. However, there was one comment that stirred Liftaloft into such a state of trepidation and shock of cold sweat that he decided to promptly copy that comment and post it on his channel as if to say look at Elizabeth making dumb statements about me which you know obviously aren't true however the question is are they really not true some time ago prophet Elizabeth Elijah received a vision of Liftaloft and this is what she wrote now that had me roll on the floor to tell Liftaloft he is not wanted here Beware of sunlight. You must know about his love for Harry Potter series and Anna Rice Vampire Chronicles. Every time I look at him, I have a vision of him with fangs like a vampire. I believe he has occult powers while he identifies with Harry Potter and vampires like his channel says. New meaning to the word bloodsucking lawyers. LOL. Why, out of the many, did that specific comment catch his attention and strike him with such fear? Allow me to briefly remove the veil which hides this strange reality. The stories originated in the Far East before traveling through ancient Rome and of course Transylvania. But vampires in the 21st century? At least one person thinks we should still be on our guard. Meet Catherine Ramsland, forensic psychologist from Pennsylvania's DeSales University and author of four books investigating today's vampire subculture. People tend to believe a vampire is what we see from Dracula, but since the 1990s, we've really had a difference in, in how people understand the vampire, and they've redefined it. She's on her way to an interview with a vampire. Four years ago, Don Henry was an electronics engineer. Whether or not I like it or not, but I do. I have uh, become, I guess you'd say, the face or sort of a role model for my community. Don is now the modest figurehead of America's flourishing vampire culture, now spread over nearly 80 cities. But don't worry, they may call themselves vampires, but they're definitely not Count Dracula. I don't turn to mist, I don't turn into bats, I'm not afraid of crosses, and I have normal needs like everyone else. However, some of them claim that they do drink blood from consenting victims. Do you drink blood? Yes, I do. What happens to you when you take it from somebody? I feel invigorated. Blood drinking carries health risks, so most 21st century vampires have found another way to suck our blood. Some people actually do it emotionally. I'll harvest that energy and actually take it upon myself and then finally project it outward. But according to Catherine, the vampires to be really afraid of don't dress like Nosferatu. Somehow manages to take all your resources. It could be financial, it could be emotional. They use your trust, they get in close, they, they suck you dry just like a vampire. The 
The story starts just before midnight, as most horror tales do. Two strangers with no place to go met at a gas station, the Shell on Roosevelt Boulevard in St. Pete. He was staying with an, under an overhang near the, the vacant Hooters restaurant, so he thought that might be a good place for her to stay. By the night's bloody end, 22-year-old Josephine Rebecca Smith was in jail, and her alleged victim, 69-year-old Milton Ellis, says he survived a vampire bite. So what exactly happened here? Well, this was no nibble. It was no vampire's kiss from a movie. This was a full-fledged attack, and there are blood stains on the porch to prove it much too graphic to show on television. After he fell asleep on the ground, uh, that uh, she, he claims that she attacked him, uh, started yelling that she was a vampire, uh, that she was going to eat him, and then uh, started biting him about his face and body. Somehow he made his way back here to the Shell station in his wheelchair with blood still oozing from those bite marks in his neck. He called police and told them that the woman who attacked him referred to herself as a vampire. Some viewers who lack the necessary discernment to see the wolf for what he is or lack the faith to believe that vision to be true. Consider this and draw your conclusion. Apart from Liptilov's blatant abominable habits, such as his fascination with Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles and Harry Potter, or his die-hard movie where almost every actor comes to a dying end, reflect more upon his blood addictions, which has apparently caught him in satanic bondage, blood addictions such as Dexter. Dexter, which Liptilov considers his delicacy of interest, is a TV series which first appeared on Showtime during the year of 2006. It relates a character, Dexter Morgan, a man of justice who works for the Miami Police Department as a forensic blood spatter analyst. However, in his liberty time, at night, he is a serial killer who kills rapists, murderers, and others he believes has escaped the law. Dexter's desire to kill was brought on by a voice inside of him which he calls the Dark Passenger and when the voice is satisfied it would disappear for only a short while and then return. His greatest pleasure came from the spilling and sight of blood. In order to do this Dexter would often spend much effort in preparing his image as an ordinary man, ordinary friend, an ordinary neighbor, while suppressing his urge for the sight of blood, blood which he preserves on a blood slide. He even went as far as seeking girlfriend to preserve his image and secret, who eventually became his wife and also having a child and adopted children. This being Liptilov's prized interest, it is also no coincidence that his life should reflect the same. According to Liptilov, he has been going out with his high school sweetheart, who eventually became his wife of 16 years, having also an adopted child. According to him, they are simply an ordinary United Nations family. And Satanism being Liptilov's influences, it should also not surprise us that he, like cherry on top of ice cream, should add that he is a worship leader and an attorney by day. Now, I am not very certain what he meant by an attorney by day, though we have already drawn logical conclusions. However, what is this about being a worship leader? Where exactly have we heard that before? I'm Randall Lippins. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm a member of ThuggesPose.org. We're going to be doing an interview today with a gentleman who has a background in Satanism and being a vampire. And we're going to talk to him a little bit. What do you do? If you would, introduce yourself. My name is Obed Mungalo. I've been involved for a while, about five years recently, and uh, the Lord brought me out. I was involved in Satanism and in vampirism, and I've sadly been deeply involved in it. So I'm going to be talking about that. The Lord brought me out and now I'm preparing to become a missionary pastor and today's interview will be about that. Uh, in my family it runs generationally. I've been 
uh, my, in my case, I'm the firstborn of my mother and my father, and that runs down the lines. It's a generational thing. In my case, there was something placed inside of me when I was a child. Another question that we had, uh, we talked about the popularity of Twilight and also Harry Potter. You know, a lot of people think that those are harmless uh, TV programs and films. Uh, what is your opinion on those type of programs? Do they draw people into the occult? Or is this something that many Christians are just uh, being too sensational about when they say that, you know, these things are drawing people into witchcraft? Personally, I don't think that radical Christianity, as it's called, being radical, sensational, is really that off because the Bible teaches us that we have to be set apart. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to that. The thing about Harry Potter, Twilight, is that there is a strong demonic, there is a strong occultic tie into all of this, a desire to turn away the young people away from God, to weaken the discernment and their spiritual awareness. They are sent in to, to create this lukewarm mentality that makes the Christian fall asleep, to use as intolerant. And they always say, oh, Christians are welcome. In fact, some of our members are Christians. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm, I don't need to go out on a limb on this one, is that any believer, any true Christian who is involved in blood drinking and energy feeding is not of God. And I personally have been sent on some of these assignments before. And it is very real and it deals with the demonic. And there is a call and a push to destroy. It's an active work. And it's happening even now. So these could be your praise and worship leaders and choir. Yes. And again, taking into consideration Harry Potter, one of Liftoff's principal interests, I would like all viewers to come to the realization that there is absolutely nothing about that satanic book that was randomly chosen. Each word, each plot, each scheme was chosen for a reason. The reason you will find in the very name of the book. As with the use of a comb, one grooms hair, and the physical means through which one molds a vessel are the hands of a potter, so are you being groomed and molded into the very image of Harry Potter. This revelation was spoken from heaven in Prophecy 43 to Prophet Elizabeth Elijah, which you will find at amightywind.com. In addition, Dexter, which is also Liftelof's primary interest, I would also like viewers to take note that the name of the man who was Dexter's father, who taught Dexter how to shed blood and still preserve his image, his name is also Harry. And Dexter's son, the one likely to follow in his footsteps is called Harrison. These are no accidents. It is plain to see that these books, TV shows, movies, and songs, which has influenced Liftaloft, groomed and molded him into such a depraved and wicked spiritual state that he should attack Prophet Elizabeth and the Mindwin ministry for preaching the true biblical gospel of Yahushua HaMashiach Jesus Christ and for keeping the Ten Commandments in love are now part of his agenda to influence the professing Christian community because he professes Christ and yet serves the occult and serves Satan with all that is within him. When he combines that which is of the devil and that which is of Yah and then serves it to the Christian community as something normal and if received by them, what is produced is a lukewarm church of defilement. Liftelot does this knowing the church will become wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. To bring Liftelot's devilish persona to a shocking conclusion, though the pieces of his life, from his influences to his interests to his current expeditions against the true body of Yahushua HaMashiach Jesus Christ, already alarming enough, Please take careful note, without sympathy, as Liptilov 
bears himself further underneath through his actions and through the very words of his own mouth. While investigating Liptolov's blood path to discover in certainty his true nature and the motives behind all that he has done against the mighty wind ministry and the body of Yeshua, it became much clearer as his feeding frenzy appetite took to a new level on friend feed. Here we see Liptolov again fueling his passion on friend feed as he makes available that passion through a movie called Interview with a Vampire. But what does it all mean? Why the blood trail lift a lot? The question that is most likely throbbing in the minds of most viewers is, is lift a lot a vampire? Truly has already answered this question. Taking a small trip back to his music, which is made available at his website, one in particular called Broken Mirror, we discover a shocking truth. As related in the description of this song, Liptolov communicates. This song was a melody that I worked on while I was in law school. Lyrically, it was a song that spoke of the turmoil of a vampire's identity, having to live by killing others, but it was a broader analysis on identity and the struggle to find it. It has that feel of inner struggle and sadness. Might be pretty autobiographical of how I was feeling at the time trying to survive law school. Some are now in awe, but for those who have not yet understood what Liftalov has stated here, please pay careful attention to the word autobiographical. What is an autobiography? An autobiography is a factual book or a factual story of a person written by that person. Or in this situation, these are factual lyrics of a person written by that person. Or in simpler words, these lyrics are Liptolov's own life story. This explains and sheds much light on another of Liptolov's confessions where he relates his need to donate to his coven of which he is a faithful member, the Unity Gathering Cult. So to draw a faithful conclusion to who this attorney by day and worship leader is, a conclusion to the question pending throughout this whole video as to Liptolov's peculiar occultic activity. Yes, Liptolov is a vampire. This is confirmed as we see again Liptolov venting his hatred towards the Jesus Christ of the Bible, who is also referred to in Revelations as the bright morning star and the offspring of David. He does this by again referring to Jesus' servant, David, as a pontificating brat, or in words that are commonly used today, a useless piece of junk. What you have seen throughout this whole investigation into the life and mind and activities of Liftaloft, truly made known by Liftaloft in ways that are confounding to Liftaloft himself, is what a select few who are holy would refer to as epic pawnage. Now before we proceed to finally render a critical exposing light upon this new age satanic contamination called Liptoloft, and in order for viewers to understand this reality from the point of view of Yahweh God, let us briefly turn to the Word of God as a foundation to understand one of Liptoloft's greatest abominable acts. Quoting from Joshua 7, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the children of Israel. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. But thus saith Yahweh God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies, until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to Yahweh God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against Yahweh of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? 
Yahweh shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stone him with stones, and burn them with fire, after they have stoned them with stones. To briefly relate the meaning and sequence of events in this chapter, it speaks of Yahweh's chosen people, Israel, who were given a command to destroy their reprobate enemies in his name. However, to refrain from taking any of their gold or any other thing as they were all cursed. In the midst of the Israelite community was one named Achan, who professed to be a child of Yahweh, yet served the devil, and chose instead to bring among the Israelite camp cursed items. As a result of that, the Israelites lost their battles against their enemies. In the end, Yahweh destroyed Achan and the cursed items from among the Israelite community. Such a biblical truth is not only eye-opening, but is also foreboding to events which would follow a similar sequence, especially in the midst of this Christian community. A year ago, a disturbing event took place. Liftaloft, while professing to belong to Jesus Christ, and while in the midst of his ongoing campaign to destroy a mighty wind in any way he can, through slander, theft, and poisonous words, Liftaloft again reared his ugly head by sending Prophet Elizabeth Elijah and the mighty wind $100 through PayPal, in which he titled, Blessings. Much like Achan who also professed to belong to Yahweh, yet served the devil, it was no surprise that Liftaloft would again seek the downfall of a mighty wind in the very same way, proving he and his cult leader George C. are both servants of the devil. Prophet Elizabeth Elijah, discerning the evil behind that action of Liftaloft, and also hearing from heaven, proving that she is a prophet of Yah, wrote the following on her channel in summary of what happened and the repercussions of his actions. Priority mail delivered. The date? August 3rd, 2011. Your priority mail was delivered at 9.29 a.m. on August 3rd, 2011 in Sherman Oaks, California. George C. sent Liftaloft with occult curses through Liftaloft Rob Reed by donating to Almighty Wind Ministries through PayPal at a Mighty Wind website of $100. The reason he donated? Blessings. No way is this a blessing except one way to expose my enemies, the depths of evil. Money was sent back through money order by a member of Almighty Wind in the USA since New Zealand mail takes so long. Rob, here are clear instructions when it is received. Drop your pants, bend over, touch your ankles, and George or Bruce can shove the amount of money you sent with your curses where the sun does not shine. Elijah of old mocked the worshippers of Baal. I expose enemies. Shortly, a special video will be made exposing all enemies who agreed sending money with curses drenched in occult spells, rituals, for a mighty wind's destruction, my harm, or death. Why you'll send it? you donate it with curses wrapped in occult strange fire. Yahushua said, send money back to you. Your spells are null, void, and powerless in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for a mighty wind. The money which Liftalaf sent was meant to harm a mighty wind in every way, including financially. However, all curses meant to harm us, he now wears like second skin. This in many ways sheds light on Liftaloft's recent poor and evil attempts to earn a living, as related earlier in this video. Nothing is as it seems with this unity gathering Nehemiah Center cult. Even the adoption of Liftaloft's son was achieved through tedious, iniquitous work from George C., his cult leader who himself cringes at the idea of being exposed for the disgusting and evil man that he is. There seems to be a common spirit working happily and freely through them both, as both profess Christ, of course the Christ who does not hold men accountable to keep the Ten Commandments. It was truly the desire of my heart to let the pastor of Liftaloft's church know who Liftaloft is, as I thought that he would be grieved to learn of his church members' actions as any holy pastor would. However, it appears that the same spirit binds them in cords of iniquity.
would you kill your wife? Can I use a sword? So to give this accident ambulance chasing daytime attorney a closing salutations of foreboding truth, a thought pending my heart and with all sincerity, lift aloft, study the book of Esther, Haman and his ten sons failed, and so will you.